Hello, sir. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Um, for the benefit of our viewers out there, we would like you to introduce yourself to our audience, please. I'm uh, Chief Debe Odumegwoju. Okay. Um, you are a member of the Supreme Council of Elders of Indigenous People of Biafra. Um, in a nutshell, can you tell us? Um, so far so good the agitation for self-determination through the due process of law which you are part of what can you say about it, the journey so far well uh, the journey has been very encouraging initially we started uh, with very unsure gait and unsure steps it started off with uh, the donation of the power of attorney to build human rights to pursue the case in the court. Uh, the essence of that is that as much as possible, we we'll want to have an achievement of uh, total independence for Biafra without much friction. And do it in a very peaceful way and uh, with minimal human casualty. Okay, outside um, the legal process of going to court, we understand that um, the indigenous people of Biafra have engaged in a political process and as well the diplomatic process. How do you think that can help or aid the Biafran agitation for self-determination? Yeah, that's a very uh, good, viable, three-pronged attack okay. to achieve that uh, uh, self-determination. The legal in order to form anchor whatever we are doing on the bulk work of the law, which I think is very reasonable. Then the second is the diplomatic uh, engagement. Because finally, in the final analysis, we are assuming to be among the Committee of Nations. And to be among the Committee of Nations, we must exude that confidence to be able to operate as a nation. So that is why we must engage other nations and try to convince other nations that we have all it takes to stand as an independent country. That is, in essence, the trust of the diplomatic uh, engagement. And uh, the political? The political is as much as possible. A police means the people. And whatever you are doing, you have to do it with the people. We can't expect the uh, Council of Elders... Uh, group of people between 10 and 15, they cannot arrogate to themselves the, sign, uh, the wisdom, total wisdom, to decide for everything for all Biafrans. So that is why it's always good to carry along the people, the police. That is why the political aspect of it is very vital in the struggle. Okay. Now, now that there are so many people out there, they barely understand the concept of um, the agitation for self-determination and trust they have been brought, brought out on the street but uh, in recent time we have seen um, a turnaround of that um, protest that's going out on the street to protest and now adopting sit at home what do you, what can you say about that because the, the terms to pursue what they call civil disobedience through sit at home uh, what is your perception about going out on the street to protest and also to sit at home? Well, uh, being confrontational is definitely going to result in casualty. And to all intents, that is what uh, going out to the, streets, to the streets will engender. Okay. You find out that the moment you unleash yourselves on the streets, you are not the only Nigerian. You have other people who are trying to go for their businesses, even if you are not...
disturbing them. They will claim that you are disturbing them. And the moment you are trying to impede their free access to and through the places of business, that is what will attract the security agencies. And the security agencies, under one guise or the other, might start injuring people. And that is what we must shield our people from. If you look at it at home, it's lethargic. You are laid back. You are not aggressive. It was used successfully in India. In India, what they did was they came out and sat on the ground. When they sat on the ground, there was nothing anybody could do. They were, they were not fighting anybody. They were not stoning anybody. Gandhi and his people that just came and sat on the road. The military people or the police people came. They carried them. When you carried them, somebody else would come and sit down there until they found out that those people were serious. So when you sit at home and you don't go to the shop, you don't go to your places of business, it is unthinkable that uh, any government will come and start coming to your houses to drag you out to come and engage in economic pursuits. And the lack of engagement in economic pursuits will, to a very large extent, scuttle the economy. And no government will accept that. So that is why I think it's a, very, it's a better option. I've always been uh, suing for a peaceful way of doing it. That is why I anchor most of the things I'm doing on the legal, the diplomatic, and the political. Okay. Now, one final thing which is very important in this entire process, the unity of Biafran people has been a big concern in the entire process. Um, what is your stance with respect to Biafran agitators, especially different groups, uniting together? Well, the agitation for the sovereign state of Biafra, initially the concept was anchored on unity. There was no time 20 people came and started saying we want to fight for Biafra. It started from one source. So it was united. But then along the line, Luca, finance, economics came in. And that was what was responsible for the disparate organizations. Some people now started feeling they can make money out of it. I've even suggested, Abinisha, that any group that midwives the sovereignty of Biafra should be seen as, as, uh, as not, they should not participate in any election. If you participated in midwifing Biafra, you should be, you should be promoted to the sinecure post of elder statesman and you should no longer be part of the struggle. You cannot, for instance, come and vie and say, I want to be president, I want to be prime minister, I want to be this. Once you are part of that process, you must be above board. You must be able to set down the ground rules and guide the young ones. This is how you go about it. Then after doing that, you don't descend again on the arena to say, okay, I want to be the president of the country. Because you find out that it's all this subtle idea of who is going to lead and all that. That is what is leading. Who is going, who is going to be the president of Biafra? Uh, president of Biafra. That's because we have seen people call themselves names, some prime ministers or have arrogated uh, uh, themselves, commander-in-chief and the rest of them. I think that is where you are going to. Yes, that is what we call euthanasia. Okay. Euthanasia is like suicide. Midwifing, midwifing, the independence of Biafra should be suicidal. Once you are able to achieve it, you should die to politics. You should move away from politics. You should no longer be alive to politics. Okay, now this is going to this very um, this um, idea. Now, what you just said now might throw up um, some sort of controversy in the entire process talking about political movement. Some people have said that Biafra should not. Biafra agitators should not agitate or participate in politics in Nigeria. And is that uh, uh, the two things, the things, uh, what you just talked about now, do they relate together? Does Biafrans should abstain or from anything politics in Nigeria? No, what I'm saying, abstention is not the solution. Because when you abstain, you are giving room to be ignored. Okay. Uh, you take part, get what you want. And then leave the stage. Then okay, okay, you take part and and then you leave the stage. Meaning that Biafran agitators to secure their their land politically, and um, those that are at the forefront 
should not see themselves as they are getting the Biafra to lead the Biafra. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Do you have any message for Biafra people out there as we're wrapping it up tonight? Well, uh, fellow Biafrans, uh, I'll have to thank you for the zeal you've shown so far. I'll urge you to always uh, sue and fake for unity because uh, it's with that unity that we ever hope to achieve what we intend. You should find that having disparate voices will not help us. Rather, it will create loophole for the enemies to infiltrate our land. Once we are united, it becomes very difficult for people to run down what we are planning to do. Thank you so much for your time, sir. It's Thank you for having me. Thank you so much.